In this tutorial, we're going to talk about optimizing your website for mobile platforms. So what is a mobile platform? We're generally referring to mobile phones and tablets. So anything that's handheld really. And what we're going to work with today is this website you can see on my screen now. It's called Our Music Blog. It's viewable on the internet at any time at ourmusicblog.com if you'd like to check it out. Though it will change over the course of time because it's one that I use for demonstrating how you can achieve different things in WordPress. So don't expect it to look exactly the same as this at all times. Currently, it's just running the latest version of WordPress, which is version 3.8.1. There's no plugins installed on the website uh, except for Contact Form 7, which has no bearing on the actual speed of the website at this time. And what we also need to sort of talk about is why we're doing this and you know why we want to optimize our website for mobile content. And there's a few reasons, but I guess the first and most important reason is that more and more people are using the internet on a mobile device every single day. The number of people using the internet on a mobile device is just increasing at a phenomenal rate compared to the amount of people using the internet on a laptop or a desktop computer, which is increasing, but not nearly as rapidly as a mobile phone. So the other reason we need to be mindful of in terms of why we're doing this is that for the most part, you meet people in you know, the USA, Canada, you know, Europe, the UK, and Australia as well. You know, we, we all have pretty good mobile internet. The plans aren't too expensive for data, though of course this will vary depending on where you are. Uh, but what we also need to consider is that those regions of the world don't really represent the majority of the population because you know most of the world's populace is in China and India. And in such places, the mobile internet speed is not as fast or not as developed yet. It will definitely increase over time, but it's not super fast yet. So given that they're the majority of the world's mobile phone internet users or mobile platform internet users, we need to be mindful of them. And also, the faster a website loads, the better the experience is for anyone who's using it. So what we're going to do today is use a tool called Google PageSpeed. It's available for you online at developers.google.com. You can just search for Google PageSpeed and you'll find it. It'll be the first result, of course. Alternatively, it's available as a browser plugin for Chrome and for Firefox as well. All you need to do is punch in your domain name there and click Analyze. It'll actually go and download your site and rank it against several different measures that it has and provide a score out of 100. Here we can see we've currently got a score of 67 out of 100. And I should say that it's actually very difficult to get a score of 100 out of 100, but we can definitely boost this well above 67. So we're just going to take a look through this now step by step and discuss what we need to do to fix this. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the site's presentation. and this, in terms of WordPress, is entirely dependent on the theme you use. If we just go back now and have a look at this, we're, we've got the 2014 theme up and running, and it's one that uses responsive design. So depending on the width of the browser window, it'll actually change the layout of the screen. So if we just grab the window there and move it in a bit, we can see the sidebar just shrunk down, and then it disappears completely. If we go down to the bottom, it goes down below all the main content there. We keep going, the margins between each of these items gets a little bit smaller and then the top menu changes completely and instead of having everything just in a line there it actually goes to the three line hamburger menu. So you can click that on and off and if you go even smaller you can see our music blog, the title moves across to the left a little bit and it slowly gets more and more reduced as we go on until such the smallest width there there's actually no images shown, or you've got the title, the same old hamburger menu, search box works as it did before, and then you can see the two posts that are there in the feed, and just as before, we've got the left-hand sidebar that appears below all of the content. So, for the most part, that's pretty good. That's fine. I mean, you could use that on your site, and it's very unlikely that anyone would actively complain and go, oh, your site's very difficult to use, please change it. So that's one of the main considerations out of the way. So from there, I mean, depending on your WordPress theme, you might be really happy with your WordPress theme and you might choose to make it responsive, in which case you can do it yourself. It does require a bit of CSS and HTML knowledge to get it working and to get it working really well. 
or alternatively and probably the easier faster solution would be to just change themes. So if you've got your theme sorted out, let's go and have a look at page speed. So any changes that you make to the speed of your mobile experience, those changes will actually flow on to the desktop experience too. So nothing that you do is generally in vain for one or the other. So taking it from the top, we've got the more important things we need to fix first. We've got to first eliminate render blocking JavaScript and CSS in above the fold content. We want to enable compression as well. And doing that is actually one of the most amazing speed increases you can actually do for your website. And as you can see here, it actually says it'll reduce the actual transfer size by 68% or 141 kilobytes, which you know, when you're using a mobile phone, every little bit adds up a lot faster than when you're using a laptop or a desktop with you know, a, a wired internet connection. Below that, we've got the ability to reduce server response time. And it'll show you that our server actually responded in 0.46 of a second. And that's pretty good. That's It can be better. Uh, but that's entirely dependent on your hosting, generally speaking. If you want to really increase the, or you know better the response time, you need to, ideally speaking, look at your host and ask them what they can do for you. And just below this, we have a few minify options. So we can minify CSS, JavaScript, and HTML. And just in the middle there, we can also leverage browser caching. So any resources that need to be loaded from your website can be cached locally by the browser. So for instance, you know any images or CSS files, things that don't change ever or may not change often whatsoever. We can set expire times to those so that they are cached by the browser. So when the user visits your website, it just goes and loads them locally. So it's very fast. Then we've got the three past rules. You can see we've got no redirects. Our images are currently optimized and visible content is prioritized in that area up there, as you can see on the right. So there's a way that we can actually fix most of these problems very, very, very quickly. So what I'm going to do is jump back into my WordPress website and we're going to go into the dashboard and install the plugin. It's important to note that what we're going to do today through a plugin can indeed be achieved through code and you can do that all yourself. But you know, for most people, it's probably going to be a bit easier and indeed faster to use a plugin. And what we're going to use is called auto optimize. So we're going to install that now. So that's installed and let's activate it right away. And we'll now we'll go into the settings because there are a few things we need to do. What we want to do is click optimize JavaScript code and optimize CSS code and then hit save changes and empty cache. As you can see, those changes have been saved now. So we go back here and let's click analyze once again. So instantly we can see we've already improved our score by many, many, many points. In fact, on mobile, it's up to 77 out of 100 now. And you can see that we still have some of these errors that we had before. We've still got the eliminate render blocking JavaScript and CSS and above the fold content, but this time it's slightly different. We can see that the actual resource there that it's asking us to change is one that's been generated by auto, opt auto optimize. So we don't really need to worry ourselves too much with that. And the next one is for the font that we're using because we're currently using a Google web font on our website. We don't have any control over Google's actual distribution of files. We just have to hope and pray that they do the best that they can, which is generally what they do anyway. So we're not going to concern ourselves too much with that now. We've just got a few things we can see here down in the consider fixing area. We've got the ability to reduce the server response time as before, use browser caching, use compression and minify HTML. So of these, what the most important one to do in terms of implementation is to enable compression. So what we're going to do is look at enabling gzip compression in WordPress. And so there's a range of ways that you can actually get gzip compression working on a website. What I'm going to do again is install the plugin, though if you'd prefer to, you can actually just do this through your HD access file. But what we're going to do is install WP super cache because using this, we can also do a few more tweaks to our website as well. So I'm just going to go install that just the same way as we did before through the usual plugin installation interface. So the plugin is installed and it's time to click activate. So what we need to do now is go into settings and then go down to WP super cache. And from here, what we need to do is turn caching on first. So we click that and then update status. And then we go into the advanced tab and 
we can see that that's done there and it says use PHP to serve cache files. So what we want to do is change that to mod rewrite first. And then where it says miscellaneous here, we want to compress pages so they're served more quickly to visitors. So we'll do that and scroll down and click update status. And what it says is that rewrite rules must be updated. So what we need to do now is scroll down and you can pretty much just ignore all of that there because it's not too important for now. But what you want to do is click the button that says update mod rewrite rules and then it returns green and says that it's taking care of that for us. So what we want to do now is jump back into PageSpeed and click Analyze once more. And here you can see that the mobile score and desktop score have both gone up by one point each. So we've enabled the gzip compression for now, which leaves with only a few things left to do. We can still go on and fix this render blocking part, but it's not going to net too great a result for us aside from boosting the score a bit. And once again, the reduced server response time is not something we can directly impact that you know you once again have to need to talk to your host. But we can definitely still get the browser caching working and it's perhaps easiest to do this and to not use a plugin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in to my web hosting control panel. And I need to switch over to my website, ourmusicblog.com. So if you get out of files and then find file manager, and it should be the same for most web hosts or something similar to it anyway. And we just wait for that to load and we open the file manager. So the file manager is loaded and you can see HT access is just there. So what we want to do is actually edit this file. So we're going to open that up just here. And what you can see is all of the WP super cache changes that it makes in there. So we're just going to scroll down and get to where WordPress is. And just after that, we need to paste in some of this code here. So you can see we've got expires active on and then you've also got expires by type. And then you've just got the various requirements there for the different types of caching. So we're going to save changes now. And that's been done. So we want to go back to page speed and run this test once more. And as you can see, the results have gone up. We've got 94 on desktop now, which is amazing, and 79 on mobile. And you can see in here that the message about browser caching has gone. So what we've done today is we've implemented three different techniques. We've used a plugin to minify our CSS and JavaScript files. And that's actually what it's serving up here now in this should fix little area, as you can see. Uh, but it's still netted a very, very good increase in performance and page speed score. We've also gone through to enable caching on the website, but more specifically, we've enabled gzip compression, which you know makes the delivery size of the page much, 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 much smaller. And then in addition to that, we've also gone on and we've enabled browser compression through the HT access file. So that should be a good way of getting up and running with making your website a lot faster for mobile platforms and indeed for desktop too, as you can see, it's much going to be much faster than it has been in the past. So hopefully this is of use to you. And if you have any questions about this or what we've done today, please feel free to ask in the comments below.